We've got Byron here, and he's going to be speaking on how .NET Aspire on app service <clears throat> enhances modern app development. So we've got a 15-minute demo. This is going to be great. Make sure that your badges are scanned if they haven't already be been scanned, and see you back in 15 minutes. Hello, everybody. My name is Byron Tardif. I'm a program manager with the Azure App Service team, and I'm here to talk to you about Aspire. So uh, hopefully you're here because you're already using Aspire or you're already using App Service. But uh, just to set the bar, um, we're going to do talking about what we're looking at here today. Everything that I'm doing, you can basically go click on that URL. That's a blog post, and you can follow along at home. Uh, you know, the the main thing is uh, we have .NET developers. We have this new thing called Aspire, and Aspire is an opinionated framework that right now lets you target Azure Container apps. But what we keep hearing is that more and more people want to be able to target app service because they're using app service today and they want to deploy those workloads to app service. So with that in mind, um, the Aspire team released Aspire 9.2. With 9.2, they introduced the new concept of a publisher. And with 9.3, the app service team, we started the journey of building that publisher so that you can deploy your workloads to app service. So this is very, very, very early. And what we want to do is we want to develop this in the open so that people are seeing the progress and what we're basically how we're building all of this stuff. And we're also driving a bunch of features that Aspire needs back into the platform so that we can benefit not just the people that are using Aspire, but anybody that is using app service today, regardless of what your workflow is. So. I have very little time, and you don't want to be watching me typing things live. So I'm going to walk you through what I did to make an Aspire app deployable to app service. All of the instructions are in the blog, so you can go read it later. Uh, and we're just going to breeze through this because we only have 13 minutes left. OK. So I'm not going to bury the lead. The first thing that I want to show you, if my mouse is with me, is this is an Aspire starter app. Uh, if I do that, you should see that it's running on Azure websites, so it's for real. And then let's look at what I did. Okay, so I already had an Aspire started app, and what I did here was, whoo, sorry about that. What I did here was I create a new branch, and then this is where I'm going to start making all of the changes that I want to do to my application to make it run on, on app service. Um, and you see what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new, dot, uh, a new uh, Nougat package. Uh, once the Nougat package has been added, it does a bunch of stuff there. We don't care. It's just adding a Nougat package. I can see that the app host.cs project was modified. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do some code changes to actually target app service. So let's take a look at that PR. So that PR is right here. So you can, do two, you can see two things. One is the Aspire package reference was added to my CS proj. And the second thing is I went and I added that uh, publisher that specifically tells it that I'm going to target app service. There's one more change uh, that is something that we're going to fix in the future. We don't necessarily want to have this, is we're making the, the A API endpoint be publicly accessible. Um, ideally, when we get to you know, the next step in, in this journey is we only want to make the web front end, the, the Blazor app, publicly accessible. And the API should only be accessible to the Blazor app and not to the public internet. So that's a change that we want to make. And it should just work out of the box. OK, so let's actually see this in action, right? Uh, once I have my change in, the next thing I'm going to do you know, I, I push and I, I do ACD in it. So right now, a lot of the tooling for Aspire is based on ACD. What this is going to do is going to look at my code, it's going to recognize what it is that I'm deploying, what is my publishing target, all of that stuff, and it's going to prepare the files. Uh, in this case, you know, ARM templates, bicep templates, you name it. And then I'm going to do ACD auth login, make sure that I'm logged into my Azure account, and then ACD up. And that's going to read the packages that got generated by the ACD init. And you know, if you look at the time, I think I did this at 10.42 in the morning. 
and it runs through the deployment and at 1048, so within about six minutes, it's created the infrastructure and deployed the application. So let's look at what that looks like. So if I go over here, this is the, re the resource group that got created. Uh, if you're familiar with Azure, you know what resource groups are. Think of them as a folder that contains your application. And what we're going to see right now is that I have uh, two apps, right? And this correspond to my API and my front end. I have an app service environment. So that maps to the compute. So right now, both apps are sharing that app service environment. I have the Azure Container Registry uh, where the images that I'm running in my API and my front-end app are being stored. And I have Key Vault because we're configuring secrets and we're making sure that we're doing the right thing, as in we're storing the secrets in Key Vault and adding references to the apps so that you know, if somebody SSHs to the app and they do a print env, they don't end up revealing your API keys or any secrets that, that you're going to have. So you can see that we're building those best practices right into the templates that we're deploying so that you don't have to think about those things. And you know, like I said, we showed the app already running. We showed the PR. And so then let's talk about next steps. right? So like I said, this is very early first cut at getting something where you can start you know, deploying a simple application to app service. We don't expect you to be running production workloads with this today. Uh, you would be braver than I am if you did that today. Uh, you, you're, if you're familiar with Aspire, there's probably a bunch of things that are missing, right? Like, where's the dashboard? So that's what I want to show you, because that's the next thing that we want to do. Um, so this is, you can think of it as the next step. Um, not, not there yet, but this is what we're working on. So what you're going to see is, in this case, this is a different resource group. I have three apps, one of them being the dashboard. We want to get to a point where the dashboard is not an app that you deploy, but is rather a feature that you turn on on the app service plans. Um, there's work that we're going to need to do in platform level to make that happen, uh, but that's the direction that we want to go. Next is you will see that we have actually exploded the, the apps to have their individual app service plans. So this is because we believe that in production, you're going to want to have different scale, potentially different SKUs, different sizes of VMs hosting different parts of your application. You want to have the flexibility to let you specify that or separate that as you need. Um, we want to be able to support additional components. So in this case, there's, a, there's an Azure Redis cache. Um, if you specify a cache in your, in your Aspire app, we want to be able to map that to Azure Path services that offer that in this case, Azure Redis Cache, or if you can think of, if you're on a, a database reference, we can link you to a Postgres or a SQL database or you know, whatever is the right path service that will complement the application for that specific role. Uh, we talked about Key Vault already, right? Like Key Vault is integral to having a secure, safe environment where you're not leaking secrets if somebody happens to be going and debugging your application. And then the other part that you're going to see here is there's a bunch of networking loop. And we want to get to the point where those deployments that, we talk, that we're talking about are deployed in a way by default where we only have uh, you know, a web front end that is publicly available, and we have all of the APIs, the, the Redis cache, the Key Vault, any other thing that is internal to the application within the VNet. And we want to do that without having this many networking resources created, right? So there's some features that we're trying to build into the platform to allow things like, if you have two apps deployed within the same app service plan, they can talk to each other without going through the internet. But all of that is like platform work that we believe it will benefit everybody, regardless of whether you're using Aspire or not. This is just one of the forcing functions that we're using to drive those features into the platform. And then, let me see what else I have. Um, OK, so here's the Aspire dashboard. Again, the key thing here is, if you notice, it's actually the dashboard running on an Azure website. So you know, we're still working on it. We're going get, to get it there. You, you might notice that there's some 
things missing over here on the left if you're familiar with Aspire. So we're, we're working on building all of those things and making sure that we have the scenario fully flushed out. And that's something that's going to come out in the next couple of months. I think that wraps it up. So I just want to go back and show you a little bit of the architecture of the app that I was showing. That is, you can think of this as the next step where we have the web front end. The web front end is the only thing that is publicly accessible. We have the API and the dashboard. Uh, you know, everything is uh, under your control, so you can scale it independently. You can add additional components, like for example, the cache. And the key thing is that we're also baking in all of those best practices, secure, safe, and reliable deployments into the templates that get generated. So if you're not an expert on networking, you don't have to be. We're giving you a good place to start, and then you can go from there. I think this wraps up my demo. Thank you very much for coming, and hopefully you can start using this today. I'm going to go back to the slide that has the link. If anybody missed taking a picture, you can literally follow along the steps that I did in my demo. They're right on that blog with a little bit more explanation. Thank you very much for coming. My name is Byron Tardif, and I'll see you in the next one.